Okay, you guys, so there's a lot of videos on how to burn fat, how to boost fat loss, how to get six pack abs. I'm gonna talk about the importance of why storing fat can be healthier than burning fat in certain situations and our ability to store fat will actually improve our ability to burn fat. So let's kick this off with a study that I came across that found that fitness level has an impact on our ability to burn fat when we're fasting as well as when we do faster training. What they found was people who are trained had a higher capacity to burn fat, but they also had a higher capacity to restore fat that's been broken down back into body fat. And this is referred to as glyceroneogenesis. This is a very novel pathway that is, kind, is less commonly talked about, but essentially it's related to gluconeogenesis, uh, which is glucose production from non-carbohydrate sources. But glyceroneogenesis is glycerol 3 phosphate and triglyceride production from non-carbohydrate sources. So basically glyceroneogenesis plays a role in fat reestification. Now fat reestification sounds like a bad thing because basically what that means is you're restoring fat that's broken down. Well, enter thiazolidine diones, which that's a mouthful to say, but this is an insulin, insulin sensitizing medication used to treat diabetes. It operates by increasing glyceroneogenesis. thereby clearing circulation of excess free fatty acids, which can create insulin resistance. So in other words, burning fat is really good, but our inability to restore broken down fat, and we have a lot of fat that's cir circulating in our, in our blood, impairs glucose metabolism. In other words, we're glucose intolerant when we have excess free fatty acids in our blood. Our ability to restore that fat very effectively is called fat reestification, and it's actually been shown to be four times higher in athletes compared to those who are, un, who are less fit. Can you believe that? But yet athletes are leaner, right? And this was an elegant study, and now I will say that with this um, theozolidine diones, the side effects can be weight gain, fluid retention, kidney and liver toxicity, and even heart failure, whereas a side effect free alternative is exercise. So having a higher fitness level means that we're gonna be burning fat at a higher rate, but we're also gonna be more efficient at restoring fat once we're done burning the fat. So when we stop working out, fat reestification rate's probably gonna be higher in a fit person, which is gonna make them more metabolically flexible. And so their, their ability to transition from fat burning back to, to glucose burning or shift that pendulum, if you will, it's not like all or nothing, we just shift our emphasis from one field to the other, it gets better when we're fitter. So, and this kind of goes in hand with the video that I talked about, about how breakfast is the most important meal, that we should eat breakfast. But essentially, this came from the bath study uh, in that breakfast is the most important meal for fat cells. And that's because breakfast improves the sugar storing capacity of fat, body fat, via has an insulin sensitizing effect on fat. In fact, breakfast has been shown to increase fat reestification rate as opposed to suppressing fat burning. So could this be the reason why glycemic control is better postprandial or post meal and why it's recommended for diabetics? I would argue yes, that's, that's part of the reason. Now, another beneficial fat storing process that I've talked about is de novo lipogenesis, but it's location dependent, right? And as you can see in this graph here, that if it's happening in our organs, it's not so good. But if it happens in our storage fat compartment, it's got some benefits. Now, again, I talked about how the amount that gets stored is trivial. It's not gonna to lead to excess body fat. So could it be that quality matters? So the fat we eat is the fat we wear, but what if we wear omega-3 and avocado fat, or fat from nuts and seeds, rather than bacon and butter fat? So the composition of the fat that's in our body stored can be different. And we can't see that with the naked eye. You can have two people who are, who, are, who are ripped, but one may have better metabolic health because they have a better body fat storage composition. And this is where quality matters, and I've talked about this. So with that, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up by saying that it's not just fat burning, it's also healthy fat storing. And is it possible that we can be low fat? So remember, low fat doesn't mean no fat. So having a low body fat doesn't mean no fat. It could be that when we have a low body fat, the little fat we have is functional anti-inflammatory sugar storing fat. So we have a little bit of fat, but it does a good job 
of soaking up excess fat when we burn fat, also fat restification, thereby allowing us to stay lean, but also preventing the caveat of excess fatty acid breakdown and insulin resistance. In other words, typically our fat breakdown rate is greater than our fat burning rate. Well, being fitter closes that gap a little bit. And in this study that talked about uh, fit fat, cycling our way to fit fat, they talk about how um, fat restification along with fat burning both increase AMPK, which is a catabolic pathway. And I've talked about this in previous videos and it's absolutely remarkable. So with that guys, um, thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and tune in next time.